What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to discuss one of the not so well known Python operators, which is the matrix multiplication operator. So let us get right into it. All right, so there's this Python operator that a lot of you guys have probably never used before, or maybe even never seen before. And this is the operator for matrix multiplication. Now, what's the idea of matrix multiplication? It's quite simple. We're going to import numpy s and p. By the way, if you don't have numpy, you can just install it via the command line pip install numpy. And the basic idea is the following. We have a matrix a and p dot matrix let's say one, two in the first dimension or in the first block here in the first row of the matrix and then three, four in the second row. And then we're going to copy that and we're going to say that we have also a matrix B and matrix B is let's do zero, five, 10, 15. And the idea of a matrix multiplication now is that the matrix C, um, the first, the first row and first column of C will be determined by taking those two and those two values and combining them in a certain way. And how you do that, I'm going to go through the manual process here, you can skip that if you're not interested in that. Um, how you do that is let's define here, first of all, the whole thing is none, 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 none. Um, the basic idea is that the first row and first column of C is going to be equal to the first row and first column of A times the first row and the first column of B. And then we add to this, the first row second column of A. And you do the other thing on B, which is, you take the first, uh, the second, the second row, uh, and the first column. So to get this value here, we take those two and those two. So it's like a coordinate system, a targets the row, b targets the column. And this is what you get as a result here. Now we can copy that and we can change this for the first row, second column, second row, first column, second row, second column. And the basic idea is always the same. You want to target this value, you take the first row, uh, so the, the A matrix specifies which row and the B matrix specifies which column. So for this one, now we're going to go again, first row, but we're going to go second column. So what we want to do here is we want to say, uh, A stays the same, basically. But for B, we're now going to target the second column, uh, which means we're going to say zero, one, and one, one. And then for this one, so for the for the second row, first column, we're going to say, okay, second row on A, first column on B. So we're going to say second row on A. Oh, sorry. And um, for B, it stays the same. And then for the last one for second row, second column, we want to target the second row uh, with A and the second column with B. So we want to say one, zero, zero, one, 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 one. That's the basic idea. And now if we print that, if we print C, you're going to see the result of the matrix multiplication. So one, two, three, four times zero, five, 10, 15 results in 20, 35, 40, 75. That's the result of the matrix multiplication. Now I'm not going to go into all the details when this is necessary, when this is useful. Uh, just know that machine learning is basically linear algebra and linear algebra is matrix uh, multiplication vectors, all that stuff. So if you're interested in machine learning, you should also know about uh, matrices and matrix multiplication or linear al algebra in general. Uh, but for this video here now, this is just the definition of what a matrix multiplication is. And with NumPy, we can do that way simpler by just saying print np.matmul for mat multiplication for matrix multiplication. And then we can specify A and B as two parameters and the result is going to be the same 20, 35, 40, 75. That's the result of the matrix multiplication. Now, this is not the same as calling the NP dot function. This is because the NP dot function behaves differently when it comes to higher dimensions and the mat multiplication or the mat mul function or method 
also does not support multiplication with scalars. So those are two different methods. MATML is the actual matrix multiplication. Now the operator, this is what this video is about. The operator now is the at operator, like the mail symbol. So A at B is a matrix multiplication, A matrix multiplication B. So that's the same as doing that. We can see that this is the case by just printing A at B. And then you can see that this results in the same thing. And Basically, again, this is just syntactic sugar, like a lot of stuff that we get with the different Python versions. This was introduced in um, in Python 3.5. Um, and this is just making things more readable. If you know that this is a matrix multiplication, this is way more readable than uh, constantly using NP matmol. And I have actually an example for you guys, I am going to copy paste this here. This is a linear regression from scratch. So this is a simple class that has a fit and predict method here. And this is the linear regression implemented from scratch using this matrix multiplication operator here. And then I also have the same thing using the NP matmol method. And you can see that this is way less readable down here because you have the thing being called here three times in a row and in nested calls and you don't really know what is being multiplied by what right now you have to analyze where the commas are you have to analyze which bracket belongs to which function call and stuff like that. Here you exactly know okay this here is being multiplied with this, this whole thing here is being multiplied with that and then this is multiplied uh, by y. That's the basic idea. I also have prepared this here as two images so that you can see the difference here. And that's basically all this is about. This is not about performance. This is not faster than using the function. This is the exact same thing. Basically, this operator calls the function matmol. So it's the exact same um, performance, but you have way better readability because you can see here clearly what is being multiplied. And here you have some nested function calls that you don't really uh, that you have to analyze a little bit um, closer to see what is actually happening here. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.